say I'm adding 20 tracks. Control, control, G for group. And then for this group, I want to add an effects track and I want to send this effects track to my effects bus. So this is how fast I'm working right now. What's up everyone? Brian here. It's been a minute since I made a video and I'm very excited because I'm back. I'm back and making videos and I have a ton of things that I want to share with you. Kibus 13 has been out since my last video and I have a buttload of emotions and thoughts that I need to unpack about this. But this is not this video. In this video, I'm giving you a little bit of an update on what's new, what I'm doing differently these days. I have some cool things that Kibus 13 allowed me to do and also Q uh, Keyboard Maestro 11 is out and it allowed me to do another cool thing that I want to share with you. So here are three and a half cool things that you probably want to also do if you're using Cubase on Mac. Let's dive right into Cubase. So in the spirit of not wasting anybody's time, here we go. So in Cubase 13, we actually have a cool new inspector. And I'm not talking about this useless little mixer. Again, foreshadowing for my Cubase video. It's going to be a wild one. Just wait for that. But I don't see the reason to use this at all. It's basically another inspector. So I never use this. However, in the inspector, inspector, we can now right click and then have expense sections exclusively selected. And this is really cool because it means that we can only have one section open at a time, which leads me to do cool things that I can do with Keyboard Meister or with my shortcut. So how I use this is I have option one for my main thing, option two for inserts, option three for sends, and option four for routings. And why this is key is A, if you know my insert workflow, if you don't, here is a link to actually how to set this up. It's really cool. Now that I hit command I, instead of clicking the inserts, it's just using my shortcut. So it's way more reliable. And then if you don't know my insert thing, uh, basically, it opens up this window, and then I can just select whatever uh, plugin that I want, and then it inserts it for me. This is roughly the same. I needed to do some tweaking because the UI is different, uh, which again, we'll unpack later. But um, now opening up the insert section, say I'm on sends, and then command I, opening up the insert section is way more reliable than it used to be also with... Um, instrument tracks let's do serum just for kicks um now it's this it looks the same it's not under the instrument so again if i'm on sends and i want to open up my inserts and put pro q on it again it's a lot more reliable so that's kind of cool but what i really like about this is because steinberg didn't give us routed folders in qbs 13 meaning that our folders are actually an audio source like a group and everything that is in that folder is actually being routed to the folder, we still have to individually route everything. And now because we can use our shortcuts to actually go into our sections and it works tremendously well, I can click my end key above my arrow key, uh, but you can use any shortcut and then it already goes to my buses. So say I want to use this for drums, great. Um, if I want to send this to guitar, all I have to do is just click one thing and no matter what section I'm on, I'm going to click one thing and it's going to open my routing and I'm ready to type whatever bus that I want to route this track into. And this is really useful because say that I open up my mix console, give it a second. I have a lot of samples and I'm dragging this into Cubase. It's not routed to my drums, right? So all I have to do is hit uh, my shortcut drums bus and this saves me so much time and I use this now it's like a second nature every time that I bring anything in every time that I want to change something I just like hit this button and then I just you know guitar or whatever um, GTR bus whatever I want saves me so much time and this is fairly easy to set up all it's using is keyboard maestro and all you have to do is essentially tell keyboard maestro to open up your routing section and then click the mouse in the relevant position which is uh, the outputs. You can also do the same with inputs. I debated if I wanted to do it, but I don't mess with the inputs as much as I do with the outputs. So this is number one. It's really handy. And also just like having the sections there, even if you're not going to do it with Keyboard Master, just have your, you know, inserts and then you can go into your inserts or you want to go to your sends, just have them as keyboard shortcuts. It's so unbelievably uh, powerful and saves a lot of time and you don't have to use any software for this. It's just a feature in Cubase and I highly recommend abusing it. Let's move on to the second thing.
The second thing that I'm doing, and I only did this a few days ago, and I can't believe that it took me this long to figure out that I can do this because it saved me so much time, uh, is panning, but panning a lot faster than probably you are doing right now. So I do have my icon control and I can pan using the knob, but I find it very slow and not linear at all so i can't really know what it's doing and then if we follow the guidance of um cla we know that it's either left or right there's no anywhere in between which i sort of agree but again taking your mouse and moving it or typing you know right or left is just too long so you can do this actually with key commands so if i hit control and left it's left and if i hit control and right it's right and if i hit control and up it's center but if I hit alt control and left, it's 50% and then right is 50% if I hold down alt also and then center is center. It's so useful and I'm using this a lot more and I'm panning stuff a lot more so my mixes are wider and kind of, you know, I'm getting the depth that I want to. And this is using Keyboard Meister. You can't do this in Cubase. You need to use Keyboard Meister, but essentially how it works is I have a MIDI remote that is actually controlling my Elgato stuff, my Stream Deck, but I added this pan knob and it's receiving channel 11, CC 11. And then in Keyboard Maestro, if we load it up, all I have is a bunch of commands that are triggering CC 11 and channel 11 with different values, and I'm triggering just hotkeys. And then that is being sent to Cubase, and then it just translated to the MIDI remote that I um, did. If you want the values, 50% left is 32, 50% right is 95, center is 64, and then hard left is zero, and hard right is 127. So five commands, and then if I want to pan stuff, left, right, if I want 50%, and then up is center. So useful, saves so much time, and I can't believe that it's not more widely adopted and that it took me so long to figure it out and I'm using it so much and you should probably too. Let's move on to the last update. Number three, that one is really cool and has a lot of potential. Let's go on. Okay, before we move on, I feel that I need to address this. I said three and a half. The one and a half is, the one is the fact that you can see your uh, routings really quickly. The half is the fact that you can change your sections with shortcuts. Uh, Jesse won't type in the comments like, where's the half? That's why it's like one and a half. You can count it as two and then it's four, but it's like, it's not really a thing. It's just shortcuts that you can do, which is useful. Anyways, that's it. Let's move on to number three. So number three is really cool and it's using Keyboard Maestro 11. And this is going to get a little bit of nerdy and maybe take a little bit more time in the video, but Keyboard Maestro can trigger your macros or workflow, whatever you want to call them, with a lot of triggers. It can be with, uh, if you're switching application, it knows, that, oh, we switched applications. Here's your macro that you wanted to do, or you can use hotkeys, or you can use your stream deck. So there's a lot of ways that you can trigger macros. One of them is typing a string of letters or characters, which is not very useful because when you're using Cubase, if I type in GIO, it's going to zoom out and then activate my in and out, my punch in and punch out, right? So we don't want to use any stringed, kind of typed string to trigger our macros, but in Keyword Maestro 11, you can actually use your modifier keys as your typed strings. And so what I did was, whenever I hit Control Control, it opens up this cool thing. And what this is, is essentially a Keyboard Maestro folder with a bunch of workflows or macros that I created. And so whenever I'm in Cubase and I want to say group this into a new track, all I have to do is hit Control Control and it shows me my palette, my full folder. And then you see how the letters are sort of grayed out. Yes, I can click on them, but if I hit G, it's going to group select a track. And so that's it. All I have to do is just click that and then it's grouped. If I want to add a VCA track to that, Control, Control, and then V, and then I have a VCA track going into my group track. How fucking cool is that? Um, if I want to add an effects track to that, Control, Control, F, and then I can add an effects track. And then say I want to send this delay to um, my effects bus. There you go. So this is how fast I'm working right now. See, um, say I'm adding... Um, say this is going to stereo out and I'm adding 20 tracks 
right? And I want to group all of those tracks. So all I have to do is make sure that I have Q-Link on and then control, control, G for group. And then if I want to decide what group this is going to, it's going to the drum bus, right? Great. And then for this group, I want to add an effects track. Um, great. And I want to send this effects track to my effects bus. This is how fast this is. Kind of combining everything that I showed you, but it's the little control control thing that I'm doing. And so what I have set up right now is audio track is A. So if I want to add an audio track, it's that easy. Um, B is for backup project. It's not something that I'm doing a lot, but when I do, it's easier than going uh, to file and then backup, right? And then figuring out where it is. So control, control, then B. Uh, duplicate for duplicate track. It's that simple. And this is like better than just right clicking and then finding where the duplicate track is. Uh, let's see what else. Effects, selected tracks, group track, instrument tracks, so whatever I want to add a track. Yes, I can go into my stream deck and then it'll do it for me. But I still find that this is, I don't know, my hands are already on my keyboard. So just going, you know, just doing control, control, I, and that's it. I have serum. And then if I want to route serum to my synth, it's that easy, right? Um, and then mix down to open up my um, audio mix down right here. So I don't, again, have to go to file, export audio. It's just quicker. What else? Uh, quantize, I didn't use. I want to use this as like switching my quantize values, but I found that I'm not very much using it. So I ended up not doing anything with, with quantize. I should probably just remove it from the macro folder. And then VCA select your track. It's that easy. I love using VCA tracks and this is a fantastic way to just like, oh, this track and this track and this track, I want a new VCA track. That's it, it's that easy. And then all these tracks, um, if we actually, let's select the VCA track and then I'm going to, where is my mixer? Uh, there is my mixer. And then, yeah, I'm controlling this VCA tracks. So easy, so simple, so fast. I'm saving tons of time using my macros. But yeah, this is fairly simple. It's all using Keyboard Maestro, and I can make a full tutorial about this if you want me to and kind of dive deeper in what also you can use this for. I'm keeping it fairly simple. But the short version of it, um, I have a macro that if I, the trigger is string is typed and the string is control control, it's showing a palette of macros and the palette that I chose is uh, this one, macro group Cubase 13 palette. And then it's just going to show me all the macros that are here. I'm trying to keep them that each one has its own letters. This is why I don't want like an extensive list. And each one is just doing its own thing. This is adding an audio track. This is file backup project. This is duplicating a track. This is file macros. So basically each one is doing its own thing. And I have tons of tutorials, not tons, but I have a few tutorials that show you how to use Keyboard Maestro. So once you actually have this one kind of configured to show you the new folder that you're making for yourself, you can do whatever the hell you want. And I find that this is really cool. Just having this little palette and having even more things at your fingertips without moving your hands from your keyboard, without going into your stream deck. I know that it's like fraction of a second. Just move your hands from your keyboard to your stream deck. And maybe your stream deck is not as far as my stream deck from your keyboard, but every second counts and those accumulate and then you'll be producing way faster. If you just follow this channel, give a subscribe, maybe, maybe a like, maybe a comment. Yes, this is the end of the video. This all, this is all I wanted to share with you today. Just a little video to kick things off before I unleash more cool stuff your way. I have a lot of cool things that I want to share with you and it's coming really soon. So make sure you're subscribed, like, comment, let me know what you think of everything that I shared with you today. If you have questions, reach out. I'm very happy to get you as productive as possible when you're working uh, in Cubase and possibly maybe even more DAWs. Maybe. We'll see. Um, Ableton 12 looks really cool. I don't know. This is going to be your next video. Anyways, um, stay creative. Stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one.